And this is when the mind shift will happen for you and you're gonna start making more money in your business. This is Ola coming to you live from my Empire Pro Studios. And on this episode, I have a guy here. We all call him Alex Z. Okay, so I've known Alex for a minute. And uh, all I remember from the beginnings of knowing Alex is I kept uh, convincing him, trying to see if he can quit his job. He was on his job for like the longest, even after making money in the industry. I don't know if he remembers that, but I was like, Son, you gonna quit that job or not? You know, and I always say that about him and also another friend of mine who uh, hopefully we get on here very soon too, Lawrence Tan. Lawrence Tan was also on his job like forever after making so much money. But I'm honored to 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 have him accept to come here and share some of his uh, wisdom over the years in the game of entrepreneurship. Uh, it is a game, and we're gonna talk a lot about that today. Uh, without any further ado, Alex Z. Well, thanks for having me on the on the line on your uh, on your show. I'm coming to you live from our upstate house where we spend the whole summer. And right now, I don't know if you guys are gonna hear, but they're installing the fence, so they're digging posts and stuff like that. So there might be some background noise, but right now it's kind of quiet. So thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, it sounds pretty good to me right now. Actually, it sounds pretty good. Um, the uh your your last name alex zubarev did i say that right zubarev yeah zubarev okay zubarev That's or you can I just mean. call me like everybody else alex z or kgb or whatever you want to call me you know oh zoolander <laughs> oh zoolander <laughs> right <laughs> stop <laughs> that face man but anyway um Alex Zubarev. i think that's probably the easiest uh russian name i've ever pronounced you're from russia correct your background? Well, uh, I was born in Ukraine, which is former uh, Soviet Union Republic, you know, Ukraine, Belarus, Russia. Uh, used to be the biggest country in the world. Now yeah. it's like a bunch of countries. Now it's like 20 plus countries. Yeah, USSR, right? Correct. Yep. I knew it as USSR when I was growing up. So it's about 20 something countries now, you said? But back in the, in the Cold War, right, back in the Cold War, Soviet Union or USSR consisted of multiple republics, sort of like states in the United States, we have 50, what, 51 states or 50 states, something mm -hmm. like that. We, uh, we used to have like 16 different republics, right? So now they all got a separate, uh, you know, country, separate govern, uh, in countries, but they all speak Russian. So they have a, they have a common language, like there, there would be like a, like people from Kazakhstan, they have uh, Kazakhstan language, but they also speak Russian as well. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's kind of like, but we're all kind of like, well, once we immigrate, we're all Russians. So yeah, there nice. you go. There's a history lesson for you. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Now, tell me, tell, tell me your, your story. How did you find yourself in entrepreneurship? You know, entrepreneurship is the hardest thing right now. Everybody thinks they can do it, right? And a lot of people are coming into the game of entrepreneurship, right? Um, what's your story? How did you get into, into, into even thinking about it at all? Like you're gonna own your own business or run, or pretty much build a lifestyle how, you, how you'd like it. I don't wanna get into the fanciness of you know, lifestyle right now. I just wanna talk about just owning your own business, owning your own life, entrepreneurship, being your own boss. How did you get started with that? Well, it's very simple, my friend. Uh, when I came, uh, when I was 16, when I came to uh, JFK airport, when I landed in JFK, uh, I had $10 in my pocket, right? $10 or $10,000? $10, $10, $10, $10. Like, like I think I had like uh, two $5 bills in my pocket. And uh, when I went through the security, you know, in JFK, uh, they asked me, hey, welcome to the United States of America. Do you want to have a job or you want to be an entrepreneur? <laughs> That's just a joke. But the true really? story, I, ca I came with $10, right, uh, when I was 16. And uh, I, you know, I, I didn't speak any, any English whatsoever. Uh, I mean, I took English in school, but you know what? That's not the same English as people spoke <laughs> here. So I couldn't understand the word people were talking. I could not say anything, like, except maybe hi and bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, that's when my journey started in a different world, different uh, economy, different culture, if you will. 
So I had to go through a bunch of different odd jobs, right, to make money, you know, to pay, you know, for this little tiny apartment we used to rent with my mom, which was like $400 a month. And uh, we did not have furniture. So I literally went on the street, like, you know, like we lived like near um, Brighton Beach where a lot of Russians, uh, immigrants live, right? But we didn't have any money, right? Like I said, I only had $10, so I barely spoke English. So I had to naturally go outside and find like furniture that people are throwing outside. So I found this mattress. And I didn't know it was not a mattress. It was a box spring, right? So this is this. Well, you thought I, it was a mattress. <laughs> I, was, I thought it was a mattress, right? And uh, my, but my back told me otherwise after, you know, sleeping on that for like a week. I'm like, I'm, right. this, my this back hurts. Like, like, it's, uh, it's, 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 something is wrong, right? Something is wrong. <laughs> But I didn't know any better. So I didn't know any better. And actually, let me just walk to um, to another place here and show you something. Uh, so, so basically, that's how my uh, glorified immigration started, you know. Okay. But you know what? I never got complacent, you know what I mean? I got, I, I, uh, I was excited to be here. I was excited to to be in a different world, per se, you know. Because back in the day in Soviet Union, it was totally different. It's not like now, right? Moscow is like one of the most expensive cities in the world, more right. expensive than New York, right? Mm -hmm. But before that, it was a totally different story. So now we just, uh, you know, hanging out with our family, with the kids by the pool here. Uh, let me just turn off the pump because it makes too much noise right now. Hang on one sec. And we got this fridge in the back. Mm -hmm. One of the extra fridges, like when we had party, have parties by the pool right. um, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I started my journey, you know, having like all, all sorts of odd jobs and stuff like that, just, you know, to put food on my table and my mom's helping her, uh, you know. So, uh, and then I landed my first and last corporate job because okay. I was always into computers and stuff. So, so that was IT? That was IT? That was IT job, yeah, engineering job. I, I, I worked uh, for like, I got stuck in a cubicle rat race, you know, for like 15 years. Right. And uh, then I was like, man, I'm stuck in life, you know. I realized I need to do some, like, like I, by that time, you know, my daughter was born. Right. And uh, I did not really spend a lot of time with her because I was always commuting to work, working like, Mm -hmm. night shifts even night shifts like on Saturday night which was crazy and I'm like man I don't want this lifestyle you know I don't want like mm -hmm. living paycheck to paycheck for the rest of my life so naturally I started exploring my options and uh, uh, started with network marketing companies I'm a lamps right just like most people right and uh, spun my wheels for a couple of years until I realized I really need to learn marketing right I need to learn how to generate leads online and how to really build a business online so that's basically condensed version of my journey from being uh, an immigrant then okay. employee and now being a full-time entrepreneur now there's a there's a there's a there's a saying out there or there's a belief out there that immigrants have a, a tendency to take advantage of the opportunities that the united states or oh, America has to provide. Do you believe in that same uh, belief? Do you think you have that kind of hunger in you that, that possibly people that were born here or raised here don't necessarily have? You know what? I think um, uh, enter, uh, uh, immigrants in general, mm -hmm. uh, we talk about the United States, right? We, I mean, you, you guys could, could be watching this or from, from all sorts of the world, you know, different countries, maybe in Australia or Canada, right. maybe in Europe. Yeah, well, United States was built like an immigrants, right? So I think people that come here without money, without uh, connections and stuff like that, they just make it happen because naturally uh, America is a land of opportunity, not a job, right? right? So they come with that mindset. I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of immigrants. Like, a lot of people. I think like Gary V, for example, he also came from Soviet Union, you know, from Belarus, right? right? So people like that, they want to make things happen, right? They do whatever it takes, as opposed to a lot of people that kind of like take things grant for granted. You know, they were born here, right. and they might be taking advantage of the system or whatever. But they kind of complacent. They're not really taking massive action, like 
like I did, for example, right. you know, and I'm not bragging, tooting my horn or anything like that. I'm just saying that anybody who really wants to change their life can do so with the power of the internet. Nowadays, it's so damn easy, right? Compared right. to like 1993 when I came, when there was like, what, America Online dial-up or something like that. Right. There was no like, yeah, yeah, I know. fast internet, came, you know? Well, I was born here, but when I came back here, after being raised in Nigeria, uh, in 98, it was definitely American online dial-up. And uh, the funny thing that I, I also like to let people know that uh, internet was new here, you know, in the United States of America. People were still using the AOL dial-ups. And funny enough, it was new in Nigeria as well, you know. And United States of America is supposed to be a couple hundred years ahead of the third world countries. But technology moves that fast. Uh, a few years later, in 1999, 2000, I got my first cell phone, which is the same number I'm using right now. Within a year, all over Africa, there was mobile phones all over the place. You know, so it's not, if anybody's thinking that maybe I got time, no, you don't, especially with the way technology moves so fast. It's not like uh, the industrial age that you're going to wait around 100 years before we catch up to America. It's not that any longer. Yeah. Truly a global economy. So let me ask you this question. So you, you guys started, obviously, in entrepreneurship, right? What was your biggest struggle? Okay, maybe not was, because every level you try to get to, right? You try, try to get to the next level, there's a, another struggle, right? Another type of different animal. But in the beginning, specifically in the beginning, did you have a struggle, and what was it? Oh, I had tons of struggles, and I still do, right? It, it's another ending journey. Uh, and it's all about uh, really overcoming those obstacles because you granted they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be there whether you're just starting out or you already seasoned veteran or you already like super top guru I don't know like it's kind of a corny name but that's what people refer to people that kind of like make a lot of money online right yeah so, so obstacles are there and this is why i look at it obstacles are placed there by universe by god whatever you believe in uh to really test if you cut out to what you are uh, set to do right if you really strong enough to overcome them they're like kind of like testing you testing you right and people that kind of like uh don't have strong mindset they quit you know on the little tiny obstacles that could be like i don't know it could be technical stuff it could be maybe uh maybe your youtube account shuts down right after you uploaded like 200 videos over the years and stuff yeah. like that but there's always going to be obstacles you know it happens all the time and we as entrepreneurs, we expect them, right? And we kind of like almost, it's almost like kind of like every time you're facing that challenge, right. you becoming a stronger person, like internally and externally, because now you can go ahead and tell your following, your students, your followers, and tell them like, hey, you know what? You can do this. You can overcome this because if I can overcome it, you can do it as well, right? It's all about your big why that's going to drive you to take more action, right? If your why doesn't make you cry, then uh, it's not a strong enough why. You need to find a real why, why you're doing this, why you want to change your life, why you want to really take your uh, life to the next level. And I like that you use the word uh, obstacle and, and challenge as opposed to struggle. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That can make all the difference in the, in the mindset. Uh, every, you know, there's Olympics going on right now. And, um, you know, there are literally uh, deliberate obstacles that are put in front of people uh, on, in certain uh, on certain uh, sport, right? Uh, because that's just what it takes to get better and to become uh, stronger and to be able to withstand uh, the storms, whatever it is that comes your way in entrepreneurship. So it's, I think it's really, really smart to, uh, stop thinking of it as struggle and just say, oh, there's another obstacle that needs to be out of my way. There's another yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Well, I, mean, I mean, that's a great perspective you brought up. Uh, Olympics going on right now, exactly. It, it's just like in, like, uh, in um, uh, any other, like it's in the fitness, same thing, right? If there's no pain, no gain, right? People want to take it to the next level. Well, they need to really push themselves over the edge and push them back to the gym every single day and uh, just like like any sport whether it's uh gymnastics or swimming they train every single day 
Like it looks easy on television, right? When they win the race, but yeah. you don't see the big picture. They train like I don't want to say like crazy, like strong words like 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 uh, lunatics, if you will, yeah, like like like, like, yeah. like, like madmen. You know, like seven days a week, eighteen hours a day. You know, without breaks, to, in order to really take their game to the next level. And uh, man, what what are like fierce like competition like olympics you know it's 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 super tough you know but uh in a line journey it's a lot easier like if you compare like, like what we do to what they do in olympics i think it's a lot easier it's a lot simpler where you can take your business to the next level you, you can only work a couple hours a day oh man you know, and show yeah. by the pool like this you know just check emails and uh you know do webinars for people to train them and i know you know, because the all the, the the only work for us it's really in the mind. It's the same thing, but in the mind. We're not using the physical body. I always tell people using your physical body uh, to make money is not the best leverage in the world. You know, um, but the mind. This you know, I mean, if you look at even the info info marketing world, right? Um, intellectual properties. You know, offering up for other people so they can you know, so they can better their life and it's just all in the brain and you don't have to do anything physical and you can actually deliver the products in, in, without being there personally. Like, that's leverage in its height, you know? So that's a beautiful thing. Now, th there's another struggle. Remember what I said in the beginning? <laughs> I felt like it took you forever to quit your job. <laughs> well, it's not quite struggle. Like, and uh, you like that word struggle, man. Like, uh, watch, watch your language because you, you, well, you manifest what you talk. That, about. One, that particular but, one is a struggle because I watch you and Tam, and I'm gonna get on his butt when I get him on too. I watch you. Okay, so when I when I it took me, I started in uh, my first thing that I attended was uh, 2004 December. By 2005. December, which is a year later, I made my first ten thousand dollars check, and uh, I stayed on my FedEx job till October two thousand and six. And then the winter was kicking in; it was getting a little colder for, uh, earlier that year. And I said, I, I can't do this. I had about hundred thousand dollars in my account, so I was like, to hell with this. I'm done, right? <laughs> and I was done. So tell me why? Okay, maybe because I mean, maybe help, let me help you out a little bit. I didn't have any kids. I didn't have a wife at the time, right? What was it that made it seem, at least to me, so long before you got off the, the job? Because you were doing well already in the business. Well, you see, you see like, like you mentioned, like you have no family and no kids, right? So it's less, less, uh, less responsibilities as when it comes to like personal life. So uh, for me personally, uh, by the time I started my uh, first uh, network marketing company, I already had my daughter. And obviously I was married for uh, over like eight years. And obviously I had two mortgages already. <laughs> and obviously I had expensive car lease and all that stuff. So a lot of like monthly bills and obligations that I needed to, in order for, in order for me to go full time in this industry, I needed to be at at least $12,000 a month consistently for at least three to six months. So that's exactly what I told myself. Once I hit that threshold, because I had a stable corporate job, it was just taking too much of my time, right? And taking away a lot of time from my family and my business. But at the same time, I could have went full time before, but at the same time, here's the funny story. Okay, here's the funny story. I'll share it with you guys. I didn't share this with a lot of people. All right. uh, when I started, uh, you know, making... Uh, really good money online. Mm -hmm. I uh, looked up to one guy who you probably mentioned in the beginning, Lawrence Stam, right? Who actually had similar background as us, engineering right. background. IT. Uh, IT engineering. And, uh, yeah. and uh, he always like, also like, he basically said like, hey, I'm going to go full time once I'm consistent, when I'm, once I'm making, uh, you know, for him it was, I think it was also like 10 or $12,000 a month for like six months, right? And he was making banking like $30,000 a month already. But at the same time, he wanted to get a retirement package from his corporate job, right? Right? Because he already earned that. And that's what he did. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to model after him. You know, why didn't want the wheel? I'm going to go and see uh, if I can get a retirement package as well, you know, because I was there for like over 15 years. I earned it. But yeah. you know what? Didn't quite work out, <laughs> work out the same way. I was taking a bit too long, right? 
I, I was making like over thirty, forty thousand dollars a month, and I could have quit my job anytime, right? right. I was trying <laughs> to really retire the same way, like to get the retirement package. Why not? I earned it. You know, it's uh, it's something that uh, that I I should have received, but it didn't quite play out that uh, that way. And at some point, I just said, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna stop working, to, uh, going to the job. And I actually have a funny story. Like I would send a message on Facebook to Lawrence right. and ask him, like, dude. How did you get uh, fired from your job? So you got the package. You got to create the course for people like us that trying to do the same thing. You know, right, right. You create the course, how to get fired from a corporate job and get a retirement package. <laughs> because I, tr really? I tried so many things. It just doesn't work, man, for me. Like I'm trying, but it doesn't work. So basically, long story short, I just stopped going to work and I just went full time and uh, the yeah. rest is history, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, it makes sense, you know, and uh, I'm actually an advocate a little bit. My perspective has changed a little bit on it in reality uh, because we have, I've had a few stories of some of my students, some of my prodigies and uh, they quit too soon, you know, and now they struggle. They don't have money for the resources they need to build the business. And, uh, and uh, the, the position where I was maybe a year from last year was, you gotta let people do what feels right for them, right? And the, yes. journey, the journey is the journey. Uh, when you're comfortable, you're comfortable. And that doesn't mean there's not gonna be obstacles in your way. And that could include not having money. That could include maybe if you, there's some people that if they stay on a job, they just, they were not gonna build a business because the job always remain an out for them to not take the business serious. So you know, you know what? I'm gonna interrupt you for one second because I really, this really bothers me when people say that. And I kind of get it, but at the same time, I don't get it because look, I came with ten dollars in my pocket, so I have no connections, no money whatsoever, right? Mm -hmm. I just had a big, big dream, right? Big dream to make it happen. So a lot of people say they don't have money, and I hate to see when people quit too early on their dreams, mm -hmm. like facing like maybe one or two obstacles, and they quit on their dreams. Right. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, there's another. Uh, person I listen to, like Grant Cardone, for example, and you might relate to him, might not, if people either love him or hate him, you know, whatever. But he knows how to really sell stuff, right? And Who's how to work with Who? people. Uh, Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone. I know Cardone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he says one thing, you know what, when people tell you they don't have money, usually it's either uh, one or two things. So it's either... Um, they saying that as an excuse not to buy your stuff and go ahead with your opportunity mm -hmm. because they don't get it or something like that. Or maybe it's the wrong time for them. So they just, they just tell you they don't have money. Right, right. Uh, but it's, it's at the, never same, the real reason, it's never the real reason. It's not the real, it's never is. It's 99% of the time from my experience, it's not the real reason. It's just an excuse to give you. Uh, but also legitimately they might not have money and living, uh, you know, paycheck to paycheck sure. and that like I was, but here's what Grant Cardone said. You know what? When people tell you that, you know what? You don't have money. You agree with them. I know. I feel you. I hear you. That's why they're banks. Nobody has money. Banks have money. You know, exactly. so you go to a bank and you borrow money, you know, yes. you figure out, you live, if you, especially if you live in this country, I mean, there's so many opportunities to get funding. Absolutely. It's not even, it's not even a question. If you believe in the thing that bad, you'll make it happen. Absolutely. If you Absolutely. don't have the belief, then you will come up with any excuses just as well. Exactly. So, exactly. So let's just, let's squash that money myth for yeah. once and for all, because there's plenty of money to go around out there. And if you want something bad enough, you make it happen. So, cool. Yeah, I was talking about, you know, it, it, my perspective on, on, uh, on, on, on staying on your job while you're believing in the big dream, right? Uh, it's okay to do that. You know, there was one point in my, in my journey that I'll be like, nah, just quit, just quit. And then I won't find like, no, 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 you got responsibilities. Uh, partner with people. We, you know, we love partnerships because the nature of what we do is partnership essentially, right? Absolutely. And, um, you know, you don't have to quit your job too soon and get in a desperate situation because if you lack money or you lack the ability to take care of your family, it will affect everything else. So you want to make sure that you're in your same mind. If that means sacrifice for a while, for example, you were sacrificing for a while, going to a job that you were not really feeling, but you knew you had to stay there for a minute, right? Absolutely. If that's what you have to do. Then absolutely do that. There's this next question right here for you, okay? Um, how many companies have you been through 
in the uh, online network marketing arena? How many companies? Okay, so first two years, first two years uh, in my uh, entrepreneurial journey when I started my first MLM, I literally went, if I had to count, I need more fingers, honestly. I, I, I went through at least like 20 different companies. Oh my God. Without, yeah, and because, why? Because like I did not realize that what's stopping me from, uh, from success is myself, right? Mm -hmm. Not my sponsor, not products, not compensation plan. So I went through so many companies, uh, which a lot of people do jumping from deal to deal yeah. without yeah. realizing that the, the, the reason they're not succeeding is the person that's facing them in the mirror every morning. Yeah. So once I realized that, you know, once it got to a point where I worked up, you know, maxed out all my credit cards and auto ships, all those products, you know, and, oh and God. all that stuff. You know, my closet was full of boxes, like from all different MLM companies. Oh, soaps. They, oh, soaps, vitamins, juices, you name it. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, didn't get into toothpaste yet, but it's okay, you know. <laughs> so, so I got to a point where, like, you know what? I look at myself in the mirror and said, like, enough is enough. You know, like, I'm, I'm financially against the wall at this point, like crazy. My wife thinks I'm crazy. My, all, my, all my friends think I'm crazy and uh, lunatic and whatever. Some other names they can call me, right? right? But I realized that, you know what? I see people succeeding online every single day. I just need to really focus right now on one thing and really learn marketing. So that's exactly what happened. I decided to succeed at that point and I, I just did it at, from that point. Like for, Usually, breakthrough happens when you like at the most critical point of your career, uh -huh. like where your 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 back is against the wall, right? And you you like you really want to cry, if you will, because yeah. there's just like you tried you so tried. many things and you failed and you failed and you failed and you failed, yeah. And now it's time. It's either you're gonna completely quit on your dreams, or you're gonna say screw it. I'm gonna make make this happen now because now it's my time. Absolutely. That's exactly what happened. And, and the live, live events, this is where it's at. You know, when you I go agree. to the first live event and you see people like Ola, you see people like, like me, you see other people that just regular people, there's nothing special about us. We're just focused on centric and like we just really committed and we're taking massive action every day. Uh, and when you see people like us, that's when the mental shift happens. That's when you have a breakthrough that, you know what, if this guy can do it, if this lady can do it, so can I. I just need to really, really treat this seriously as a business, not a hobby. And yeah. this is when the breakthrough happens. And this is why I'm so excited. When people go to the first live event, yeah. they have that breakthrough. And I, and I feel like it's me back like four or five years ago, my first mm -hmm. live event, you know? Absolutely. And uh, this gentleman we're going to have on uh, very soon, Justin. And uh, I saw him in Atlanta and I saw the fire before he is who he is right now. And I saw the fire at that particular. You remember that event in Atlanta? Oh yeah, that's that's yeah. the event I'm referring to. That's the event uh, I had my breakthrough. Right. Uh, when yeah, that's the same event when Justin came with his wife yeah, from right. Costa Rica. Yeah, same event. Yeah, when I gave you my check to take home, and you know, give me my check again. Oh right, that's another story. So I took your check because <laughs> I drove from New York all the way to Georgia because right. like I was afraid of flying. Like I had that fear of flying, so I'm like, oh, Screw I'm gonna drive from New York. So I drove and then we, we, we hooked up, we connected and you're like, hey, you're going back to New York, why don't you take my check? So, right. <laughs> so there you go. So I delivered your check like a FedEx guy, you know, and right, I, never, right. I never send you the bill, man. So I, thanks for, right. you, <laughs> you the bill well, for you know, really. For those of you that may be listening and worry about what the check, so we, when we make money in that company, they present all this big check on the stage and you know, it's essentially a representation of the money we've made at the time you know so anyway thank you for that but um quick question okay so you've been through some of this company now after you became successful you changed company not too long ago recently right um where do you place loyalty in that is there loyalty relevant there somewhere or how do you feel about that did you were you stuck for a second was it a struggle for you to make a decision uh, that some people may say is business decision or some people may say, no, you're lacking loyalty. How do you address that? Well, there's multiple perspectives you can look at. Um, first of all, in our, in our uh, business, in our um, world, you have to realize people always join people, not companies, not compensation plan, not uh, company owners or anything like that. 
people join people because of relationship, because of past experiences and past uh, business ventures, right? So, and really like in any business, in any offline world as well, if you think about music world, if you think about real estate, if you think about any other business, people deal with people, right? Not with company names or That's products like necessarily. Yep. It's all about personal relationships. So if, if I make a decision after being in a company for a while that the company direction is not where I want to go personally and they don't take my feedback as a, as a, as a leader, you know, and the suggestions that I make, you know what? I have full right to look for my people as well, because I know if I, if, if I'm not making the money that I want to make, I know they're not making the money that they truly deserve by taking action. So right. that's when I change direction and look for, for other opportunities. And that happens in our industry all the time. Yeah, absolutely. You have to realize people always join people. So you always want to have relationships uh, going. You always want to check with people. You, want to, you always want to keep uh, relationships fresh because ultimately it's a people's business. So, so that's basically the answer. Uh, that's the way I look at things. And, uh, so, agreeing, so loyalty is not relevant when you're making a, a business decision. I am loyal to my people. I am loyal to my team. To your I, team. To your and, team. And, okay. Right. That's who I'm loyal to because ultimately we in business to help other people, right? Mm -hmm. So if I see, like I said, if I'm making money, I know for a fact they're not making money. They're struggling, right? Right. So I, then I can turn around and say, you know what, guys? This is where we're going. This is where we have a lot better opportunity to make more positive change in people's lives and make more income for you guys as well. So that, that's what loyalty is all about. I'm loyal to my team and to, to, to my guys, to my leaders, you know. And that's why as, when that happens, I, I, I actually had a private uh, phone conversation with my top leaders. And mm -hmm. I told them, like, this is the direction I'm going. This is why. Mm -hmm. you know? And this is why you do what you need to do as a leader. Sometimes you need to really scratch everything and start fresh. Sometimes that just because there are things besides your control. There, there are certain things you can control, but there are certain things you cannot control. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's always, that's why uh, business decisions can be tough. Uh, if everybody could make it easily, then everybody will be making money. But sometimes it's just a tough decision to make, and you have to be the tough one as a leader uh, a lot of times in the business. All right, good, good, good. In five years from now, what do you see yourself doing? Um, there's, there's a controversial... That's a great question, man. I'm like, you got me thinking now. Five years thinking. from now. From years from, from now. What do you see yourself doing? Because, you know, we're, you're doing a little bit of a top tier opportunity right now, not necessarily uh, a traditional MLM, right? In, in five what? years from now, what do you see yourself doing? In five years from now, I want my, uh, my business entities a lot more diversified. I don't want to be necessarily just in a line business uh, marketing place. Right, space. Uh, I want to be in the space <laughs> industries as well. You know? <laughs> That's just rhyme. Right. But I, I want to be in other uh, other uh, niches, right? I want to be in other uh, markets as well. I want to have uh, more, obviously, bigger brand, uh, more products, and uh, more opportunities for people to to learn from. Okay. So definitely, five years from now, I want to expand by that time into multiple things. But at the same time, I love online marketing communities. So I love, you know, changing people's lives and helping people get their business to the next level. And uh, positively affecting business owners as well. Because, I mean, there's like <laughs> so many people that uh, got started with me, for example, and now they're doing something else. They might have an offline business that's successful. They might have their own coaching programs and stuff like that. Heck, man, uh, if I m mention some names, I don't want to do that, but there's some people that made multiple seven figures just because of a couple of videos they watched and they believe that if this guy can do it, yeah. so can they. It's all, it's all about conveying that uh, belief level to the field and you don't know how many people you can affect. Sometimes you go to the event and you meet this guy and he's like, are you Alex Z? I'm like, yeah. Well, thanks, dude. Because of your video, I just made $400,000 this year. And I'm like, wait a second, let me get this on camera. I want to get this as testimonial. Let's get this right now, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, it's, I've had those moments too. I just met one guy last week who just told me that I linked him up with somebody and, this, and he was telling me the story. And 
you know, that's, uh, that's actually the point of this interviews too, you know, because you never know who's watching, who's going to be impacted, who's going to be encouraged uh, on whatever today is. Today is going to be every day until, until YouTube disappears or iTunes dis disappears, right? <laughs> yeah, so, you just never know. You just never know. Never know. All right, cool, man. Um, you get to ask our audience a question now. I get to ask the audience the question? Yes. And we will see the questions on your blog or like about podcast directory or something. They need to answer. They need to answer on the review on iTunes on the on the comment area and YouTube. All they have to do is answer. That's that's really you. You put me on the spot. All right. So how about this? One question that I want to ask your audience is, um, like honestly speaking, I would ask them to look in the mirror and really ask themselves like real question, not some like like crazy question that most people ask or answer but being real like being authentic with yourself and ask yourself a real question what is stopping you from success like ask yourself that question what is stopping you from success granted most of people that are watching this speak english right, right. Granted, they have computer access they have internet yeah real question real deal question what is stopping you from success so, real so, question. So the excuse is just real, 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 real question. Right. So let's pretend like you watching this is your mirror and you're asking yourself right now. And then, but we want to be in on the game. We want you to share with us. What do you think is stopping you from success? And share with us in the comment area pretty much. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's yep. the question. Yep. All right. Speaking of events, we're going to be in Vegas, October 21, 23. So, can't wait, man. Can't wait. We have so many people coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun and lives will be changed. So if you want more information about the, about Vegas, um, you can leave that. You can just email me, myempirepro at gmail.com. We'll give you some more information about that as well, too. But I'm, Alex is going to be there. I'm going to be there. A ton of leaders. A lot of people you're going to be able to learn from. And, um, you know, your income, your results are directly as a result of the people you surround yourself with. So it's going to be an opportunity to spend two days with the kind of people that you may want to be around if you're looking for bigger results in your life. And I want to appreciate you for coming here. I hope you had uh, some fun with this. I had fun. Yeah, I had fun as well. And just uh, to add uh, to what you just said. Mm -hmm. Opportunities to go to hang out with the leaders, you never miss them. Never miss them. because. Ever. Your income will always going to be directly proportioned to the amount of money those uh, people you hang out with. Yeah. Right. Average of five people. So average. Right. Yep. So so if this is kind of like hacking your way to success, if you will. It's kind of like it's a hack. It's this a is hack. how you hack. This is how you hack. You go to that event in Vegas and you hang out with us and see how crazy real we are. <laughs> and this yep. is when the mind shift will happen for you, and you're going to start making more money in your business. So absolutely man thank you so much for being here man hey guys i'll see you on the next one peace hey guys. discover how to make five to eighty two thousand dollars per month from flipping real estate in your backyard even if you're on a shoestring low budget no cash credit or experience required just simply go to www.reflipcoach.com Hey, do you want my steps to six figure PDF? Do you want that? Do you want my free ebook on how to make six figures income in simple steps? Simply go to network marketing to show.com. Network marketing to show.com.